but this should not be necessary. Look, people ought to understand they got loved ones and all of those loved ones are at risk if we don't follow these common sense things. Now, the vast, vast majority are, of people in Washington are honoring these orders, the vast majority. I think the thing that we're short on is the, the, the individual decisions we make in our daily basis that we shouldn't have to send the National Guard out. And that's when people are going out to, to dinners where you really don't need to go out to big dinners right now. Uh, it, it means, you know, if you're, a, if you're a teenager, you're not hanging with your friends in close proximity. It means not, it means calling your grandparent and say, Grandpa, it's just too dangerous for you to be hanging in close proximity with people right now. So I'm going to call you every day and get you a good book to read and try to keep you alive. And so that's really the most powerful thing uh, we need here. I've seen it in a lot of places, but as these charts indicated, not enough. So we need to really uh, put pedal to the metal on this effort. Can I ask a question? Yeah, I'd love to ask a question because I was the one at Al Qaeda Beach yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, it's wild. It looked like the summer. And I was talking to those folks, and there's kind of a flippant attitude of this because what doesn't impact you and it hasn't impacted you. It's kind of hard to, to wrap your head around it. And I, I hear you saying, you know, everybody needs to step up and do their part, but that's what we've been saying for, for a long time. And it's difficult, too, Governor Inslee, because there's officers driving the ship in Alki, and you know, the, the folks who are doing the kind of alcohol serving um, while it's still takeout and the people who are on the beach. Um, I'm curious for you, I know you said you don't want to have to enforce anything, but do you think it's enough to say, please take us seriously this time, or? Well, it, as we've indicated, we've had some success. Some of the numbers I've shared with you have indicated that some of this data say we have had some success. This is not all doom and gloom. There's a lot of people staying home, and there's a lot of 18-year-olds who aren't showing common sense. So uh, it's just we need to continue to ramp up that effort. We need to continue to keep the pressure on. And as I've indicated, if we're not cutting the mustard, there could be further orders coming that do have uh, both stronger scope and more enforcement behind them. But I want to reiterate, uh, we have the ability to influence some of these folks in our individual lives. Those people you see at Alki Beach, uh, most of them have parents and brothers and sisters. And those, those folks got to hear from their parents. And, and social pressure is something that can work. And I'm asking people to exercise that. You know, your kid may need an attitude adjustment. And, uh, and that's what we really need right now. Uh, so I'm hopeful that we continue in this effort, and I hope that it will be more successful. Time for a few more questions. Hi, Hannah Scott with Cairo Radio. Governor, are you doing everything you can to stop or slow the spread of the coronavirus in Washington State today? If so, please explain how. Well, we, we are doing everything that is good for the health and safety of the people in the state of Washington. As I've indicated, we were one of the first, one of the first to legally ban large gatherings, and we have now decreased the size of that. We were one of the first to close our schools, which was a very difficult decision, I can tell you. We are one of the first to have closed all of our entertainment and social uh, uh, networks. We're one of the first to, uh, to have uh, some degree of significant testing uh, here in the state of Washington, although there is much more to do. We are providing good unemployment compensation, including making sure people can get it as soon as possible. Now, I know we have some delivery issues. People are very frustrated about this, but we removed the legal one-week requirement to have to wait, and now we're broken up. We're hiring 100 people to try to accelerate getting that money out the door. We have made good decisions, very rapid ones, to get $75 million out the door of the 200 that has been appropriated. We have, uh, have a vigorous effort to build up our metal cap me medical capacity, some of which I, I talked uh, to you about. And I'm exercising every ounce of the bully pulpit authority that I have to try to help us all become unified in this effort. Uh, and there may be additional orders that, that become necessary. Those orders uh, are not uh, 
slam dunks because when we do these things, it has an impact on the ability of people to pay the rent and uh, pay the mortgage and buy bread and shoes for their kids. And we got to take that in consideration as well. And so those are all the things we're thinking about. And right now, I think we're making the right decisions for the state of Washington. And we will continue to look at this data every single day. Governor, uh, I'm wondering what's the most important metric you'll look at that would trigger a more restrictive, more restrictions like a statewide shelter in place? Is it emergency room admissions? Is it more positive tests? Is it more fatalities? What what what's the trigger mechanism here? Well, this would be kind of easy work as governor if we could give you just one metric to look at, but there's no algebraic or algorithm that can really do this. We have to make a judgment about the right call based on a lot of, of uncertainty. And all of those things you mentioned go into the mix. We've had a, uh, an uptick in uh, hospitalizations with people with COVID-like symptoms. That is troublesome. We have had mixed results in our traffic patterns, which have some significant decrease in some places, but very inadequate decrease in other places. We are looking at what we will be able to accomplish in our surge capacity in our hospitals because it's a race between increasing your surge capacity and the extent of the epidemic. We are continuing very sophisticated modeling, feeding all of this data into models that the epidemiologist uh, can give us. And it'll be a bit time till we have the next model to help us predict these, these matters. And I just want to tell you the difficulty of this as well is this virus has, has thrown some curveballs in at different times in different places. Uh, this is not entirely predictable about how the virus will behave. It appears to behave somewhat differently based on where it is and what population it is working in. So uh, all of those things are important. We're going to continue to make the best judgments we can and I think you know how seriously I take this. Governor, I wanted to go back to your uh, comments about the businesses. Uh, if you could clarify one point about whether you're taking or signing a proclamation to give workers the legal right to uh, leave the workplace to protect themselves and related to that, one particular business in Snohomish County, Boeing, a number of its workers have called for shutting down the Everett plant because of the number of employees who have been diagnosed with COVID-19. What, what's your, uh, do you think they should shut down that plant Jeremy, for if you could weeks? Bear, bear with me just for a moment. Tara, I have a piece of paper on my desk. It has the name of this fellow I want to, uh, to cite. If, could you see if you can help me with that? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, yes, the question about Boeing is connected to the whole rest of the state's economy, as you know, and it is not the only place, but obviously a huge part uh, of our economy and, and the workforce. Uh, we generally would think uh, that we would think of Boeing as we do other large employers, both from the safety of their employees' perspective and the, the economic impacts to families if they do have to close. So what we're doing today is to uh, tell uh, uh, Boeing employees and all employees that we want to protect you if you're over the age of 65 or if you have serious underlying medical conditions, you ought to be able to stay at home and keep your job and get unemployment compensation. Now for the rest of the employees, the decisions will have not been made. We have not made a decision yes or no on that and we evaluate these on a daily basis. So the possibility exists. We have not made that decision categorically, and that decision will be based on all the data that we continue to get uh, hourly. Do you know that, just for a moment? No, oh, that wasn't it anyway. Okay. Um, do we have another question? That's it. Okay, I wanna thank people for their continued effort. I wanna repeat uh, that we're gonna get through this. I think people understand that. All of these things we've asked of Washingtonians are temporary with permanent consequences. So I'm hopeful in the days to come, we bend to this task, we get through this together because we know we are gonna get through this together. Next slide.
Thanks, guys. Thank you.